What's up guys, KPlays here. I hope everyone's been having just as much fun with the Wilds Open beta test as I am. You know, when I'm not working through the first two days of it that is. Doesn't adulting just suck sometimes? But I am off today, so I'm making the most of it. I'm glad to say that my PC isn't on fire and I'm not seeing any of the crashes or PS1 era graphics that people have been seeing. So it's safe to say that I'll be all set to play the full game come February. If any of you are running into those issues, make sure to fill out the official survey, which I'll link below. It would be a real shame if performance issues kept some of you guys out of the hunt, so make sure you make your voices known. The more feedback Capcom gets, the better they'll be able to optimize things so we can all join in on the hunt next year. That aside though, the first thing I wanted to cover for anyone that's been keeping up with my hunting run analysis from Gamescom all the way up until now is to inform you all of a few changes. And I know what some of you might be thinking hearing that or seeing the thumbnail and title of this video. Shouldn't the demo version and the beta version be pretty much the exact same thing? Well, I assume that'd be the case too, but apparently there have been a few tweaks. They range from minor to pretty impactful, including a possible new mechanic that's potentially so game-changing that I'm not even going to include it in this video until I'm fully sure it's a thing. More on that soon. For now, I wanted to make sure that I bring some attention to some of the other things I've seen so far. We'll start with the bad news first, just to rip the bandage off. Don't worry though, after this bit, it's all good news from here. Echo Bubble? Yeah, the damage seems to have been nerfed on arrival. I'm glad to have gotten some footage from New York Comic Con to make this apparent, but look at this. 25 per song here, 15 per song here. That's a reduction of about 66%, which is... painfully significant. But on the bright side, almost everything Bubbles meant to Hunting Horn's damage potential still remains true. Even the reduced damage version we have now is still allowing the Dude Stick to put in a ton of work. As of the time of making this video, Hunting Horn is squarely in the middle of the pack in speedrun times versus Ray Dow in the beta. There's even a 5 minute 22 second one that's unposted right now that puts it up to 6th place. Now if we're being really realistic here, unless the Bowguns have finally been rebalanced to not deal obscene damage alongside everything else they can do. <laughs> you serious? They're most likely not going to be on the bottom half under Hunting Horn, but as things stand now I'm still optimistic. Echo Bubbles got a nerf, but the overhead smash follow up attack aka Crush got a huge buff which is pretty good. Other than that, no other motion values seem to be touched, and we're not nearly topping the charts like we were in Rise. So, knock on wood, we may have already gotten our rebalancing adjustments, and they may see Hunting Horn as being in a good spot as it is now. Plus, we still don't know how the full game will treat the weapon. I've still got my fingers crossed in knots that all these sound multi-hits will pick up some extra damage and utility once we get Elemental and Status Horns to work with respectively. Critical hits from Affinity, while still pretty unlikely based on how past games handled sound damage, still have a non-zero chance of helping us out here. I mean, for example, Gunland shells scale with attack and don't use up sharpness like crazy now, so there's at least some precedent for Wilds breaking long standing patterns with some weapons. Could that be a bit of a cope? Mm, maybe. But they've been cooking so hard with Hunting Horn so far that I can be optimistic if I want, right? And most importantly, there's whatever Hornmeister will do for us. In most games it just increased the durations on your buff timers, but in Rise they did make it into an outright offensive skill that boosted sound damage and sped up recital attack animations. If the same happens here, or maybe a sort of halfway point between both, we could compensate for that nerf and even put us further ahead in power than we were in the demo or the beta. Maybes and full game hopes aside though, let's get back to what we know for sure in this version we have now. Here's a nice mechanical buff that I learned about from one of my subscribers, Amimox's videos. The Echo Bubble Dance can now be chained into itself. This is something I wasn't able to do with playing at TwitchCon or in New York Comic Con. When I tried, I'd either get a pause before starting another dance, or the input would come out as a roll instead. Now though, as long as you have charges to place another bubble, you can keep busting a move up to three times in a row. This will let you queue up the 9 notes in total and drop 2 to 3 bubbles in the exact same spot. The former will be great for things like getting your most important buffs up while setting up for damage dealing or loading up on echo waves. But keep in mind that the latter fact means that your bubbles being stacked together puts you in an all or nothing situation. If a monster is in the stack, bring on the doubled or tripled pain. But if they move away, you've got nothing for at least 30 seconds when your first charge refills. From the looks of things between watching speedruns and playing myself, it seems like the go-to method will be dropping bubbles one at a time and hoping slash planning that monsters will be hit by more than one, rather than always trying to maintain a constant three. You'll be pulling your hair out trying to do that. But this neat dance chaining technique could still come in pretty handy at times. Since we mentioned stopping off on notes though, let's talk about that song cue. I mentioned during some demo gameplay analysis that when cancelling a recital with the dodge roll, you no longer lost the song from your queue until you actually played and activated the full effect. It turns out that that may have been unintended or decided against though, because now we're no longer able to do it. 
Instead, once you start playing a song, you're locked into the animation until it applies. Meaning no infinitely looping roll cancelled recitals with just one song stored. That most likely wasn't going to be something we wanted to do very often anyway. So the change doesn't affect us very much overall. It'll just be helpful to know exactly how long you'll be committed to the animation if you find yourself needing to move sooner than you thought. Recitals and encores are so fast now though, that unless you pick a really, really bad moment, you should always be able to get out a song relatively safely. No more being punished for the Hunting Orange Shuffle unless you time it poorly or overcommit to an encore or performance beat. And speaking of those moves, if you have been having trouble finding out the timing for the boosted recital mode attacks, the window for both of those and roll cancelling are almost identical. Good to know. Lastly, let's talk about that mounted moveset. I was finally able to see the, what the mounted encore looks like, and I still say that your grounded moveset is better in almost every single way. What's new here though, whether it ended up being changed or I missed it during my testing, is that you actually can stock all three notes during the mounted swings. Instead of just using note in one or two when you unsheath your weapon on the sacred, what's happening here is actually that you begin a sort of blank combo where you can input any note you want. You have to choose the note before you actually do the swing instead of on the actual swing though. Which, if it turns out that this was in the demo all along, might be where I missed this. I'm not sure if that was the case though, because anytime I tried hitting X and A, I jumped off my sacred instead. Whichever way it was though, it does mean that the full song selection will in fact be available while mounted, and there's no limiter like I thought. But again, with how slow note stocking swings are without all the note shortcuts of the grounded moveset, and the mounted recital itself slowing you to a stop, 9 times out of 10, you're going to want to be playing Hunting Horn with both feet planted firmly on the ground. Corner Horn on the go will 100% be a mean strategy. Don't do it. Yes, I'm talking to you. You know who I mean. Nah, I'm joking. Let me get back to playing some more of the beta and making some more content for you all while we have access. How's everyone liking their chances to get their hands on, finally? How are you all enjoying Wild Hunting Horn? Or, I don't know, any of those other weapons they keep putting in the game for whatever reason? Let me know down below. I've got a Hunting Horn crash course coming soon for anyone that may need some advice on how to use our new toys along with some hunts against all these new monsters. And that secret thing that we're not going to talk about until we test out some more. Keep an eye out for those and anything else I might decide to crank out in the next couple days. I was considering putting some things together for a really deep dive guide, but considering that there are some extra things that Hunting Horn won't have until the full game, like the other special performances in Echo Waves and also possibly some new songs, I might just save that until February. Expect that one to go pretty in depth because there are a lot of extra technical things going on for Wild's Hunting Horn. Until then though, this has been another K-Plays and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.